Let's make Farmer Maggot's farm. Hello guys, in this video we're going to make uh, Farmer Maggot's farm. Uh, this has already been made a few years back. Uh, it appeared on the Tales of Middle Earth website as a written article. So what I thought I'd do is go through some of the pictures and talk talk through it, how I made the bits, and in places sort of remake little bits and pieces in video form, such as the sort of the cornfield. I guess, but most of it will be talking through pictures, um, just because it was made so long ago. I thought it'd be quite appropriate anyway. Um, there's quite a lot to this. Um, you know, uh, it's not something for the faint hearted, so probably two, maybe version and three for the building, other bits and pieces, being I'm gonna be talking through it rather than pictures. Um yeah, so I guess let's just get on with it. Just to add on this, um, this could be split up into two parts, I think, because uh, while recording it, it did get quite big. So there was quite a lot in this article. It's making the actual vegetable patches, the fields, and some buildings. So this first part is all going to be about making the fields and the vegetable patches. The first one we're going to make is this wheat field. Uh, now this is made from a coconut doormat. So that's what this is. Do you see this here? But what I wanted it to be is sort of maze-like. You can make them just where you just cut out the doormat and leave it, but I wanted to make it maze-like so, you know, you can put your miniatures in and move them through sort of an almost maze-like structure so you can get different paths through. Um, it's going to be 20 inches by 20 inches is the width. And to begin with, going to cut out a uh, pick from a piece of thick mounting card square of 20 inches by 20 inches uh, then take the mat the door mat and cut it into strips that are two and a half inches wide and there's going to be five rows and each row will have two paths to walk through uh, next on the card mark out where the rows and walkways will go uh, each walkway should be an inch inch and a half and sort of mark that out on the map and then cut the map down into strips to uh of the various sizes you'll need um so you probably end up with sort of three bits per row and so you'd end up with sort of strips something like this but don't glue them on first uh, once you've got them cut out and you just mark them out on the map, put put it all to one side. Uh, what I found helped is to mark on the board where and on the back of the map where the strips will go. So on the map, back of the map, just use a white pencil and then just mark um, rows one to five and then pieces A to C. So then you know quickly where to uh, glue them onto. What you're gonna do is then cover the uh, walkway areas in PVA glue and sprinkle on some sand and then shake off the excess and allow to dry. And then you're gonna paint the sand in a dark brown and then dry brush with a lighter brown. So in GW paint terms, I guess this is like a Rhinox Hide and then a Morphang Brown. Uh, and then just glue the pieces down, the pieces of the mat down in their correct places. And when you've done that, uh, when you've cut, when you're cutting the map, you'll have lots of little loose bits of the map. Uh, once the paint's dry, just put some more PVA on. This will help seal the sand in anyway, and just add in the uh, loose bits of straw in. So this is like all bits of wheat that have uh, fallen into the pathway. Uh, you know, trampled down wheat kind of thing, and that is it. That's the uh, wheat field done. 
Next, we're going to make some cornfields. For this, you'll need some uh, bamboo skewers. Uh, and what you're going to do is take one. You don't really need pointy end. <coughs> this is one I've worked with already. In fact, it's best you don't. You have flat ends. This will go into something. But you're going to come along and between an inch if you want a short one and two and a half inches if you want a long long one I'm going to go to about here but for this you'd snap it off like so so we want a bit of a rough end at the top and then on the next one what you could do is get some pliers just come down and uh, chop it with the pliers so you've got a nice flat end there so there you've got two almost for the price of one as it were Next, we're going to use some modeling putty. Here I'm using Milli Putt. Uh, this is similar to green stuff, in fact, it's a two part putty. Uh, and this one's white, so they're both somewhat white. So you get two bits, like so, and you just mix them together. I'm going to quickly mix it together now, like so. What you're going to do is make get little beans, about yay big, probably a bit too big, little mini sausages, beans, you're going to need about three per, per corn, shoot, and what you're going to do is just them around here now this is a step that's not you're not really gonna see it but you're gonna notice it if it's not there these are sort of representing the corn and my cat's about to come into shot hello well I'll carry on uh, yeah so these are gonna be like the corn and we're gonna make the leaves wrap around so what happens is when the leaves wrap around it gives it a bit of size so you'd notice it if it's not there, but you're not really going to see these, so it doesn't really matter too much what they look like. So what I'm going to do is make... Well, I think I've worked out I you need oh, quite a lot of these. So I think I worked out... 239. So it's best to do these in batches. So what we're going to do now is allow that to dry and harden and then we're going to make the leaves. Next up, we're going to take a scrap or strip of um, scrap paper that's about a quarter of an inch wide and about two and a half inches long. And just one end to come in and sort of make it sort of somewhat leaf shaped by sort of angling in the end. And you're going to need three of those. Next up, you want to get some water and PVA and make a really runny mix. And you're just going to sort of get the paper and dunk it in and cover both sides. And you're just going to come onto your corn bit we made earlier and just sort of wrap it around. Like so. The same with the next one and try and do opposite sides so we've wrapped it around that way gonna wrap this one around this way and the final one go okay, back around the other way like so And all we're going to do is leave that to dry and then spray paint it green. I'm using the dark enamel green. And then when that's dry, you're going to dry brush it sort of, uh, I forget what the shade is now, snot green, goblin, what was goblin, what's goblin green in new paint? It's going to be goblin green, whatever that is, or a light shade of green. The corn field itself is much like the wheat field, is going to be 20 by 20. Uh, but what I decided to do for this is <clears throat> to cut it down into five 
um, five inch wide pieces um, and then you can sort of almost modulize it so you can put it in different formations so it's the same sort of principle where you have a pathway two pathways going through each row but with this way you can just uh, you don't have to do this but you can just sort of make it make the walkways in not the pathway through going different places plus uh, doing it this way it cuts down on storage space I thought uh, for this I cut out five five inch by 20 uh, inch strips of mounting card uh, in much the same manner as the wheat field pieces and then cut down pieces of foam core that are two and a half inches wide uh, instead of like the doormat you're using foam card for this and then just angle the edges ever so slightly so it's not just so their slopes so it's not just a sort of straight edge kind of thing and then these are glued in place and then they're covered in PVA and sprinkled in sand, shaken off the excess, and it's painted in much the same way as the wheat field. Once this is all done, uh, I've pushed the uh, corn stalks into the foam core, and so they're roughly one inch apart, like so. And just do this for all five pieces, and you've got your corn fields done. I apologize for my cat being in shot, but. He wants to work with me. We're going to make some vegetables, different types of vegetables, but we're going to do it out of milli pot. And so what I'm going to do is basically show you uh, the hardest ones and going really simple. So mushroom, you're going to get two little balls, like so. Sort of biggish one and a smallish one. Roll it up, and on the big one, just put the end of your finger and just sort of push around so you've got a semicircle, like that. That's the top of the mushroom. And the other bit you just make a stalk out of, might be too much there. It just gets put underneath, so you need to roll in like a little cylinder. And just put that underneath, and sort of pad it on. And you've got sort of a mushroomy type shape, that's how you make those. Now, i, I switch it back up for this. Turnip, uh, and let's do a carrot. A carrot is just, <laughs> it's so easy. Uh, Get a little bit of a milli pot, a bit like the mushroom, semicircle, allow that to dry. Turnip, same principle, but it's a bigger circle and just allow those to dry. You can pre make these, then we just stick them on a bit later on. But I'll ask the three vegetables. Uh, there is a fourth that we're going to use in this, but we're using that, making that a clump foliage. And if you've watched the ha um, Halloween video from last year, we made a turnip patch, you can also make some of those. Next, you actually want to make the actual vegetable patches, the ground themselves. This is just made from foam core cut into six by six strip and then just bevel the edges. Um, this is quite similar to how I did if you watch the Halloween pumpkin patch video, it's pretty much the same as that. Except on these ones here, I haven't gone over with green over the edges because I just didn't think it would need to. I just wanted to have a brown patch. If you look here, it's the pumpkin patch we made at Halloween. It's just quite similar to that, just without the green. You can add it in if you want. I just didn't think it needed it for these. Um, yeah, so it's uh, six by six, then coming with covering it in with PVA and sand. Just a quick recap. And then paint it dark brown and dry brush with a, a lighter brown. And then just glue your vegetables on that we made earlier. Yep, my cat, still in shot. So we're going to make a um, scarecrow uh, for this milli part and just going to sort of make it out of so it's on a cocktail stick and just going to put a blob around the top this will be his body and then sort of an arm on both sides I'm not going to have enough milli part for this so I'll have to do a bit later on uh, so put an arm on put two on if you want probably best you put two on I'm just doing one uh, blob on the top for his head, another circular blob and then sort of make a disc out of a blob here and my hands are getting sticky but I'm not going to be able to do this but oh, I we're trying to make a hat shape anyway, my hands are sticky from working all day 
and we're going to put that there. Now let's just quick show you how it's sort of done. And you, if you do the other arm here and spend a bit of time trying to make this look like a coat using a uh, sculpting tool, and then we just cut down about there and leave that to dry. And you just paint them up in various browns, however you want. And what I've done is just around the hands and the head, just stuck, stuck some uh, burnt static grass and that's your sta uh, scarecrow done. I think that's going to be it for this video. Uh, we'll cover the sort of buildings part of it in the next one. So until then, guys, take care.